This is a story about a boy named Billy who lives on a farm with his father, mother, and three sisters in the mountains of northeastern Oklahoma. Billy's dream is to own hunting dogs, and so he saves up money for a couple of years. After saving enough money, he buys the dogs from a breeder, but has to pick them up in a neighboring town. So he walks through the mountains by himself to pick up his dogs. When arriving in the town, Billy is mocked by the townspeople for being a hillbilly, but tries to ignore them, picking up his dogs and returning home. Billy names the male dog Old Dan and the female dog Little Ann. He trains them to hunt coons and together both dogs make an efficient hunting team. Old Dan has tenacity and Little Ann has intelligence. Billy and his hounds begin to make a name for themselves in the community as talented coon hunters. Soon two brothers from another farm challenge Billy and his hounds to try and catch an old coon that has tricked every dog who has tried to catch him. However, during the chase, one of the two brothers trips and is killed by an axe. Later, Billy's grandpa tells Billy about a regional coon hunting contest, and Billy is excited to go. When they get there, he sees all types of hunting dogs. After Little Ann wins a silver cup for best looking dog, the coon competition begins. Billy and his hounds win, even after battling a harsh winter storm. When Billy returns home, his family is excited to see him. He gives his mother the prize money and shares the trophies with his sisters. However, one day, Old Dan and Little Ann find a mountain lion. The mountain lion is aggressive and attacks the two dogs and even Billy. Eventually, Billy uses his axe to kill the mountain lion, but his two dogs are hurt. Old Dan dies from his wounds and Little Ann gives up the will to live without Old Dan. And in the end, after both of the dogs are buried near the house, Billy and his family move into town and a red fern tree sprouts between the two dogs' graves. Although not necessarily a religious story, where the red fern grows does at least acknowledge the involvement of a higher power. Billy often prays for things to happen and his prayers are seemingly answered. However, what is so admirable is that Billy does not wait idly by. He is diligent in making things happen for himself. And this relates to why the dogs had to die at the end. As Billy notes, it was all part of a larger plan to keep his family together, as the family was thinking about leaving Billy behind with his dogs and grandpa while they moved into town. So what does the red fern symbolize? In the story, the red fern sprouts in between the two graves of Billy's dogs. His parents explain that the red fern represents a sacred place. However, this representation goes beyond just the sacredness of the physical land, and comes to mark the sacred relationship not only between each dog, but between Billy and his two dogs. This story explores the dynamics of human and animal relationships, particularly as it relates to pets, and the dynamic of this relationship is first expressed through the narration. The story is told through the human perspective of an aged Billy, yet readers are still able to get into the minds of both Old Dan and Little Ann, two dogs. Through this narration, we come to the understanding of both dogs and their personalities. Furthermore, Billy as a narrator reflects on whether the human-dog relationship is driven by loyalty or love, only to come to the conclusion that it is love. The relationship is not built upon a master-servant model where one party wields power like food and shelter over another. It is a relationship where both parties share mutual respect for one another. And of course, this brings to question, why can't more humans have that type of relationship with each other?